My name is Zoom Vo. I'm a pediatrician and an adolescent medicine specialist. And I'm here today to talk about mindfulness practice and how mindfulness can help teenagers cope with low moods and depression. Mindfulness simply means to pay attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. That definition of mindfulness by Dr. John Kabat-Zinn invites us to experience mindfulness as a way of living, being fully present in the here and now. Mindfulness is about getting out of autopilot mode, where our bodies might be here, but our minds might be somewhere else entirely, thinking about the future, thinking about the past, and not really being present. Mindfulness can also be translated as heartfulness, and that word heartfulness invites us to experience mindfulness with some of the heart qualities that are really essential in giving mindfulness its power to heal and transform pain and depression. Uh, some of these qualities include loving kindness and self-compassion. Because when we combine present moment awareness with self-compassion, we can really free ourselves from low mood and from depression. Mindfulness has a long history going back thousands of years to traditions in Asia such as Buddhism and yoga. And in the past several decades, People like Dr. John Kabat-Zinn and many others have brought mindfulness into the mainstream in Western medicine, psychology, healthcare, and education. You don't need to be a Buddhist to practice mindfulness. In fact, when I tell teenagers about mindfulness, I tell them that mindfulness is found in every wisdom tradition throughout the world. And the way we teach it, it's suitable for anyone of any religion or no religion at all. Because we don't ask you to believe anything or to not believe anything. Instead, we simply invite you to learn from your own direct experience and observation. Mindfulness can be practiced anytime and anywhere. It's not simply a technique that you pull out when you're feeling stressed or depressed, but in fact, it can be a way of living and a way of being in the world, and it can transform the way you experience life. Sometimes our minds have a tendency to get stuck in the future or stuck in the past. We sometimes have a tendency to worry about what might happen if this happens or if this doesn't happen. Or we can get stuck in our memories or regrets such as I wish this hadn't happened or I wish I hadn't done that. This tendency is totally normal and very human and it can get especially powerful when we get depressed or stressed and it can lead to a type of thinking we call rumination which is repeated negative thinking over and over and over about our problems that doesn't usually help us solve the problem or make anything better. And in fact, it just makes us feel worse and makes us feel more depressed. Mindfulness offers us a way out of rumination. Mindfulness can help us to free ourselves from negative thinking by getting out of our heads and bringing our primary awareness to our bodies and to our breath. We can even take care of depression and low mood with mindfulness by simply recognizing when we're depressed, breathing with it, and perhaps holding that low mood with mindful awareness, recognizing it with awareness, with self-compassion, and an open-hearted attitude of acceptance rather than fighting, resisting, or judging it. Because when we fight, resist, or judge our low moods, typically it makes our low moods even worse. Most research on mindfulness has been done with adults. And some studies have shown that mindfulness practice can be even as powerful as antidepressant medication in certain situations. Other studies have shown that eight weeks of mindfulness training can change the brain in ways that are actually visible on MRI studies. So it's almost like brain surgery, but without the surgery. Research on mindfulness with adolescents is in its early phases and so we don't have nearly as much data or evidence scientifically, but the early results are very promising that mindfulness can help adolescents with depression, anxiety, and pain. At BC Children's Hospital, we teach mindfulness to adolescents who have chronic mood problems, anxiety, depression, and pain. And we teach mindfulness in a number of ways. We teach what we call formal mindfulness practices, which are taking time just to be mindful. For example, sitting still, closing your eyes, following your breathing, or lying down on the floor, and paying attention to your body one body part at a time. In addition, we also teach teenagers how to practice what we call informal mindfulness, which means bringing that same mindful, 
present moment, non-judgmental awareness into activities of daily life. For example, walking to school or waiting for the bus and being fully present as you go through those activities also. When we first started teaching mindfulness to teenagers, we sometimes heard that teenagers can't really get it, that they're too young or too immature to really do mindfulness. Our experience has been the exact opposite. I've met many teenagers who really get it and not only get mindfulness, but inspire and teach me with how they are able to use mindfulness in very creative and powerful ways to help deal with depression and very difficult situations and transform their lives. So you might be interested in wondering, okay, how can I try mindfulness? Well, the good news is we can try mindfulness very easily and it doesn't have to take too long. And so I'd like to invite you to try a very simple mindful breathing practice with me right now. So I'm going to hold this bell up. This is a bell of mindfulness. And when we hear the sound, it's simply an invitation to let go of all of our thoughts about the future and the past and simply be fully present right here, right now. So we hear the sound of the bell, just letting go of our worries. There's nowhere to go, there's nothing to do. We can just be present in this very moment. And as the sound fades away, we can start getting connected to our breath. Our breath is a wonderful gift, a miracle of life that brings our mind and body together in the here and now. So how does it feel to breathe right now? If you'd like, you can close your eyes as you pay attention to your breath. You don't need to control your breath or make it any different. Instead, simply bring your awareness to the present moment and noticing what it feels like to breathe. Say yourself breathing in, I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know that I'm breathing out. In, out. And you might notice your mind wandering, and that's totally normal and okay. If you notice your mind wandering, you can simply pay attention to where it goes, being curious, oh, I'm thinking about this, or I'm thinking about that. And then without judgment, and simply bring your awareness back to the next breath. Breathing in, I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know that I'm breathing out. In, out. And you can also invite a gentle smile to your present moment awareness of the breath. You can bring a gentle smile to the corner of your lips. Whether you feel happy or not, it doesn't matter. Simply experimenting with that and just noticing what happens. Breathing in, I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I'm smiling. Breathing, smiling. We'll hear one sound of the bell to end this formal meditation. So what did you notice in this practice? What did you notice in your breath? What did you notice in your mind? And how are you feeling right now in this very moment? There's lots of great resources for learning about mindfulness routines. I'd like to share a few of my favorite websites with you. One of them is my own website. It's called mindfulnessforteens.com. And this is a teen-friendly website that has videos about mindfulness, it has uh, some mindfulness teachings and practices in it, and it also has free downloadable audio guided meditations. Uh, and with these meditations, you can practice mindfulness practices uh, directly from your computer or your mobile device, and you can also download them so that way you can listen to them anywhere, anytime. The Kelty Mental Health Resource Center at BC Children's Hospital has also put together a really wonderful website with lots of resources and uh, practices for mindfulness for teens. There's also a great three minute video called Mindfulness Youth Voices. And in this video, teens talk in their own words about what mindfulness means to them and how they're using it in their own lives. Uh, that video is available both on mindfulnessforteens.com and on the Kelty website, um, or you can simply go to youtube.com and search Mindfulness Youth Voices. 
Uh, finally, for anyone who is interested in teaching mindfulness to teens in an education setting or in a healthcare setting, uh, I would recommend that you check out the Mindfulness in Education Network, which is an international network of uh, professionals using mindfulness with children and teenagers. There are also many good books on mindfulness for teens. I've written a book called The Mindful Teen, Powerful Skills to Help You Handle Stress One Moment at a Time. And this book is written directly to a teen audience in teen-friendly language, teaching teens how to use mindfulness practice to handle stress, depression, and anxiety. My friend and colleague, Dr. Chris Willard, has written a wonderful workbook called Mindfulness for Teen Anxiety. And this can help guide teenagers who are struggling with anxiety symptoms. He's also got another book coming out soon on mindfulness for teen depression. Another friend and colleague, Dr. Amy Saltzman, has written a book called A Still Quiet Place, and this presents a full curriculum on teaching mindfulness for teenagers. And she will also be soon releasing a book written directly to teenagers uh, on A Still Quiet Place. Finally, for educators, uh, there's a great book called Learning to Breathe, which presents a full mindfulness curriculum that can be used in school settings.